early church, never came to church to sit down and watch somebody ramble on for 30 or 45 minutes. They always came with something to bring to the group. So much so that the Apostle Paul had to kind of say, all right, guys, slow down a little bit. So, one of the things about Cell 53 is that if you have something, whether it's a poem, a word, a short lesson, whatever it is. See, I did that short lesson. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, um, we invite you, we plead with you, we challenge you to come up. So, um, Stephanie, that's your cue. Stephanie has answered that challenge, and so she's going to come up and share a couple things with us. Um, I really, really, really encourage you as she's sharing, please listen to what she's saying. It's like I always say, this might be what God brought you here for this tonight. Not me. It might be this. So, please pay attention. So last night, um, I was thinking about a few different things. Um, one of the things is that this is the first holiday season without Mike, and I was thinking back on all the ways that I fell short through the last holiday season. My husband, uh, and for all of you who don't know who Mike is, he's my husband that passed away January 20th. So last holiday season was when he went um, downhill. So last night I was focusing on all of the ways that I fell short, and then all of a sudden I realized that in every way that I fall, fell short, God didn't. And I started thinking of everything that God is. Um, and I started putting together a list. Um, so, God is without limits. God is loving. God is just. God is our healer. God is our sustainer. God is our protector. God is our father. God is our creator. God is sovereign. God is ever present. God is good, God is constant, God is compassionate, God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful, God is our refuge, God is awesome, God is a God of peace, God is righteous, God is eternal, God is faithful, God is forgiving, God is gracious, God is pure, God justifies, God is immortal, God is invisible, God is over every man, God is God of God and Lord of Lords, God is forever and ever, God is glorious, God is greater than man, God is infinite. God is impartial, God is light, God is our strength, God is long-suffering, God is merciful, God is mighty, God is holy, God is near, God is our stronghold, God is our helper, God is wise, God is absolute, God is our salvation, God is our shepherd, God is perfect, God is our deliverer, God is true, God is truth, God is unequal, God is incomprehensible, God is our hope, God is our all in all. By the age of uh, 14, I was taking female hormones. 
dressing as a woman and I was selling my body on the corner. <clears throat> By the age of 14, I was also HIV positive. I'm 44 years old, 43, sorry. <laughs> but I'm 43 years old and uh, anybody I knew back then that was HIV positive is no longer with us today. So glory to God. Um, been to county jails, been to prisons all over the country. And uh, that's how I went into prison. So sometimes we're not as pleasant as the others. And uh, one thing that keeps bothering me tonight is <clears throat> I was in this building one time when I lived in Portland, when I lived as a woman, and uh, it was a bar. And as I was telling uh, a friend of mine tonight, I was saying, uh, God forgive me for the things that I did in this building. So it's um, pretty ironic how he brought me back here tonight. Oh, wow. And uh, 2009, I was on my deathbed, had full blown AIDS. I had an infection in my brain, an infection in my blood. I was having numerous strokes daily. My virus had taken over my body and the, uh, my immune system was gone. Doctors told my family to make arrangements that I would be checking out. But um, I laid in the hospital bed for three months waiting to die. And in that three months, I called on God. I prayed to God. I asked God for strength. I asked him to save me, to rescue me from the world I was trapped in. I begged him to use me. Within probably three, three to six months of that moment, my HIV was undetectable. My immune system was back full force, as if I'd never even been sick. <coughs> I had osteoporosis, it was gone. I had diabetes, it was gone. The infection was gone. The left side of my body that I couldn't use very well from the strokes is fine. <clears throat> it was during that time that something told me that homosexuality was an addiction that trans, transgenderism was an addiction. Once I saw it and actually accepted it as an addiction, it was so easy for me to put it down and to walk away from it. I'm not saying that the devil doesn't, uh, that he's not on my back around every corner because he is. But now that I understand it's a sin, it's just like drugs and just like alcohol, I can put it down and I can walk away. Don't matter how many times I tell it, it's always like the first time. <laughs> but um, God is making a, He's opening a lot of doors. Um, and we are actually, hopefully by next year, looking to open a home in this area for those who want to get out of that dark transgender, homosexual, LGBT world. You know, Romans 1 and 27 tells us that it is not only sinful, but that it is unnatural. So it goes against the natural order as God created and as he intended it to be. You know, and it's not about um, hell and brimstone either, because when I lived in that world, I was approached by people claiming to be from one God or another. And I got one side of the spectrum or the other. I either got, you're going to hell. Or, it's okay, I made you that way. You know, I either got the truth and hatred, or I got no truth and love. But it was a correctional officer, when I was in prison my last time, who came to talk to me every day. And I looked forward to talking to him. He told me God's truth, and he told it to me in love. And so that's what that's what um, that's what we try to do. 
you know, we do everything we can to tell God's truth, and we do it in love. Because if we're not telling the truth, and we're not telling the truth in love, then I can guarantee you, all we're going to do is chase them away. Because I was out the door, I was turned the other way. I didn't want to hear it. But there was one man that came to me and showed me love and compassion and wanted nothing from me. And that was the correctional officer. So I just want to say, you know, look us up online and look us up on Facebook, IBelongAmen.com, IBelongAmen Ministries. And like us, share us, tell the truth. It's not about, um, it's not about offending anyone. It's about defending them against the lies of the devil. So, you know, if, if you truly love, because I don't know anybody who doesn't have uh, a lesbian friend or a family member or a co-worker, but if you truly love them, claim that the love of God, then you have to share the truth with them. Because them liking you on this world, that don't mean nothing. It's them getting to the next world that means everything. Before I go, the opposite of homosexuality is not heterosexuality. That's right. The opposite of homosexuality is redeemed, justified, free from the bondage of sin. Thank you.